are now becoming husband and wife by symbolizing the home that they're going to build together. Rabbi Lawrence Hajiaf wrote, if the chuppah represents the Jewish home, wouldn't it make more sense to the chuppah to have four walls rather like any other home? Instead, the walls are removed, the poles are here, and that reminds us of the symbol that was that of Abraham and Sarah, their home in the wilderness. That design comes from them we are told that they lived in a tent. Now, in their day, in their time, I wasn't exactly there, but I do remember reading about this, is that they had stone structures that they lived in. Despite being very wealthy people, Sarah and Abraham lived in a tent like this. Why? They wanted to make sure that they not only could move their home to different population centers, but they could also fulfill this a wonderful mitzvah, this commandment of hachnasat yorachim, which is welcoming the stranger, welcoming guests into their home. It was for this reason that they kept their home open on all sides. The people passing through, travelers, would know that they were welcome in their tent, just as you will be welcome in Carrie and Oleg's home. I'm gonna share our first cup of wine tonight together. And the deal is this, she's saying yes, and the deal is this, you have to finish this cup of wine. So no I'm problem. gonna ask you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm bringing straws to the next no. So what's gonna happen is this. I'm gonna ask you to take a, cup, um, a sip of wine uh -huh. after we do the blessing, pass it to Oleg and he gets to finish it. Then you get to finish the second. I might have poured a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay, I have to finish it? Not yet. <laughs> so, I want you to, so what I'm going to ask you to do is wait till I finish, do the blessing, take a good sized sip, okay. and let him finish it. You'll get to finish the second one, okay. or third or fourth. Baruch HaTadonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Peri HaGafen Amen. We are grateful to you, Sovereign of the Universe, for the fruit of the vine and the wine and the blessings therein. Take a good size sip. Nice. Okay, now you have to finish it. <laughs> oh, good <Yeah>. job. <laughs> <laughs> We're standing under this canopy. It's open on all four sides. Marriages rely on the love and support of all of you, their family and friends. What's going to make this home strong isn't going to be wood or brick or PVC piping or a fabulous wine from Israel. What's going to make it strong is the shared love and the commitment. And while I have all of this wonderful garden of friendship on either side and their parents, there are those who are no longer with us, whom we think about, who we remember, who are always part and parcel of our lives. And I ask you to, just for a moment to remember Carol Offit, Arcadi, and Maria Ramales all of blessed memory. I'd like you to turn and face your families. Turn around and face your families and friends. For just this moment, let go and face them. There are them. I want you to face this way, lovey. This way. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'd like you to close your eyes for a minute. Think about the first time that you were together laughing and talking and connecting. Then the, think about the first time you kissed one another and the feelings it engendered. Think about driving and conversations when if became when. Think about saying yes to each other, to adventures, to thoughtful risks, to be filled with meaning. Think about the first time you saw each other today on this extraordinary day that begins an extraordinary adventure and turn and face each other. Beginning. Oh, like, do you, do you take Carrie to be your wife? Do you promise to be her lifelong friend and companion? To love her, to honor her, and to cherish her, and to stand with her through all of the changes of your lives together? If so, say, I do. I do. Perfect. Carrie, do you take Oleg to be your husband? To promise to be his lifelong friend and companion? To love him, to honor him, to cherish him, to stand with him through all the changes in your lives together? If so, say, I do. I do. Perfect. Mm. She does. <laughs> yes. What about you? What do you say? Just, just don't okay. leave me out of anything. Our furry grandchildren are our first to help us become parents. Mm -hmm. So I would ask you then to do this. I have their beautiful rings on and I promise I'm giving them back. I used to say, rings they have no beginning and no end. There's no point of weakness. There are no sharp edges. It's a continuous circle. But the fact is this, friends. These rings began as something entirely different. Dug from the earth, soldered, burnished, formed into something new and something different. Something shiny and beautiful and feeling really, really lovely on the other's hands. And so it is with these rings, when you look at them, I want to remind you that the changes you've made together and the growth that you've taken together, will you take her band and slip it on her ring finger and repeat after me? That one. First that one, right? Accept this ring. Accept this ring. As a symbol. As a symbol. Of my love and respect for you. Of my love and respect for you. Perfect. You want to slide that on? She's probably going to want her diamond back too, though. I'm probably going to give her that Accept this ring. Accept this ring. As a symbol. As a symbol. Of my love. As of my love. And respect for you. And respect for you. Perfect. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So um, <laughs> you're officially married, but I have a little more to do tonight. You could give each other a kiss if you feel. <laughs> Closer to me. Okay. And I'm going to put this around you. 
Before the ceremony, friends, we signed a ketubah, a marriage contract. The number seven in Hebrew is a, is, is a really powerful one. It's a number of completion. It's a number that marks so many different things, the colors in the rainbow, the blessings in a ketubah, the marriage, um, the marriage contract. They have chosen a set of blessings. If your Hebrew is a little rusty, I'm gonna give you another interpretation of the seven blessings. It is an interpretation. It is not a direct translation. If your Hebrew is pretty good, you're gonna know that already. The fact is what they do, however, it, what they have done is chose a set, set of blessings that match who they are. Their respectfulness for the earth, their respectfulness and love for their families and for their friends, their respectfulness for how we communicate and how we walk in the world. Um, will you take this side and walk, and I'll walk it around this way and this way and come a little closer, my dears. Short. Okay. Look at that. Yay. There you go. They are wrapped in Samaya's talit. I brought mine that's three times bigger. This has so much meaning, however, for them that it is a beautiful thing indeed to have around and surrounding them. <clears throat> Remember when I said to you, you're, it's res, you have a responsibility for the blessings as well? So here's the thing. When I give you the high sign, if you'll say amen or amen, then what you're doing is blessing them and pouring blessings on them as well. There are almost 200 of you. If we're supposed to say 100 blessings of gratitude a day, we've got this covered. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam Borei peri ha'gafen Amen. May your marriage enrich your lives. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam Shehakohu barah lichvodo Amen. May you work together to build a relationship of substance and equality and quality. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam Yotzeher ha'adam Amen. May the honesty of your communication build a foundation of understanding, connection, and trust. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam Asher yatsar et hadam b'tzalmo B'tzalem demutav nitoho V'hitkin lo mimenu binyan adayad Baruch atah Adonai yotzer ha'adam Amen. May you respect each other's individual personality and philosophy and give each other room to grow and fulfill each other's dreams. So ho 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 stasis v'tagel ha'kara v'kibbutz banecha l'tocha v'simcha Baruch ata Adonai m'samech siyohon b'vanecha Amen. May your senses of humor and playful spirits continue to enliven your relationship. May you understand that neither of you is perfect. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have picked this because I think you're perfect, but you chose this one, so I'm just reading it here. You are both subject to human frailties, and may your love strengthen you when you fall short of each other's expectations. Ahava v'yachva shalom v'reut Mihi heira Adonai Eloheinu yishema V'yerehi Yehuda U'v'chutzo t'yeru hu'shalayim Kol sason v'kol l'simcha Kol chatan v'kol kahala Kol metzalot chatanim v'chupatam Unorim ha'mishtei negeinatam Baruch ata Adonai May you be best friends better together than either of you are apart and now 
you get to take the wine. To take a sip and let her finish it, okay? okay. I've got more. <laughs> more? Just a bit. <laughs> Do you want some more? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's my job to please. <laughs> <laughs> You're not driving tonight. No? <laughs> I went right over there. <laughs> You're swimming. <laughs> I left finger swollen. Is there anything? It's a nice little You're married. Aww. Just a, an amazingly short amount of time. You're married. This 19 is, minutes. I know. Wait. Wait. <laughs> I've got 16 or 17 more pages. I'll take this back. Okay. So this is what love does. It makes you want to rewrite the world. It makes you want to choose the characters and build the scenery and guide the plot. The person you love sits across from you and you want to do everything in your power to make it possible. Endlessly possible. And when it's just the two of you alone in a room, you can pretend that this is how it is, and this is how it will be. Before the ceremony today, when we signed that really beautiful, beautiful ketubah, I asked you to think about the moments that ifs would turn to when and the future became something quite attainable. You are promise and hope for a brilliant future and for a troubled world. I think that this particular prayer might be a good one for us all. May today there be peace within, May you trust God that you are exactly where you are meant to be. May you not forget the infinite possibilities that are born of faith. May you use those gifts that you have received and pass on the love that has been given to you. May you be content knowing you are a child of God. Let this presence settle into your bones and allow your soul the freedom to sing, to dance, to praise, and to love. It is there for each and every one of us. I wish you the joy that comes from a fulfilling marriage and relationship. I wish you patience when the to- toothpaste tube is left uncapped. I wish you a smile when socks miss the hamper. I wish you a deep breath and words miss their mark. I wish you belly laughs at a great joke. My wish most of all is that truly this is the day you love each other the least. May your days be long and good and may your lives be full. Will you put your hands in mine? We share this blessing in all of our faith traditions. May you feel God's blessing and may you feel God's presence keeping you and blessing you no matter what curveballs life throws at you. May you feel God's presence accompanying you and steeping you in a love that simply can't be lost. Shalom. Amen. May God's accompanying presence in your life bring you wholeness now and always. We say together, Amen. 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 So you've done such a good job tonight. I'm so proud of you. There's just one more thing you have to do. <laughs> this notion of breaking the glass at the end of a ceremony. Uh, yep, see, they're all, you, you can turn and face them because they think you're so cute. <laughs> so I need your help with this, friends. Every vessel like this, I know almost nothing about physics except this. The thinnest part of the glass is usually the widest part. I'm not going to fool around with this guy. He's going to stomp on this one with his nose feet. I can handle this. I, you, did, you, did you practice this at home? No. Okay, so there is a space. This is a vessel. I want you to make a wish for them. I, I really firmly believe in blessings and wishings, wishes. I want you to think about their futures together, how much you love Carrie, how much you love Oleg. And the fact is that what they can create together is a way of repairing a very, very challenged world. So close your eyes for a minute, send a wish in here. It'll be captured in this glass. And then when Oleg smashes the glass, those wishes go out into the world to really help make this all a better place. You ready? Look at all those cameras. <laughs> ready? This is totally filled. So that's the fourth reason why we break this. The first one is it's the end of the ceremony. The second is without, without care, things can very easily be broken. I want you to take really good care of each other. And the third is the mystical one, the Kabbalistic one of Madonna and Arod, Rod and that is that I want your love to last as long as it takes you to put every little piece of glass back together again 
without a seat. Are you ready? Ready. Ready. Are you sure? <laughs> I think so. This is headed the first time, babe. Uh, with your heel. But you right. gotta hold his hand to this because he can't do it without you. Muscle! <laughs> What would I do without your smart mouth? Dragging me in and you kicking me out Got my head spinning No kidding, I can't pin you down What's going on in that beautiful mind? I'm on your magical mystery ride And I'm so dizzy Don't know what hit me, but I'll be alright But I'm breathing fine You're crazy and I'm out of my mind Cause all of me loves all of you Love your curves and all your edges All your perfect inflections Give your Love your curves and all your edges, 
all your perfect imperfections. Give your all to me, I'll give my all to you. You're my end and my beginning, even when I lose, I'm winning. Let's give him a warm round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. I have a chance to tell a few good words. Can you please pay attention, please? Hello? I have a chance to talk about Family Shore because I know Family Shores for the last 50 years. And you know what? Great family. And because the one of the youngest shore getting married, let's multiply family shore. Good people, we need good people. Thank you. Now please help me welcome father of the groom, Mr. Alex Shore. Well, good evening, everyone. When I was preparing this, I was really debating Russian or English, but uh, there are a lot of people here who speak two languages. I'm one of them, so English it is. I, I do speak a few more languages, a bit of Romanian, a bit of Ukrainian, some German, Yiddish, all of them, no exceptions, with heavy accent. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the secret. Even when I speak Russian, my wife has a tough time understanding me. <laughs> so, uh, Feel free to use a translator who is sitting next to you. For the past 30 days, precisely around 6 o'clock in the morning, I have been waking up to the same question from my darling wife. Is your speech ready? <laughs> what are you going to say? And, and trust me on this one, regardless, regardless to her petite size, my wife can be very persistent and very persuasive. <laughs> I had a few ideas, but my project manager rejected all of them. <laughs> and I really, really wanted to write it down, but Every time I tried, it was like two different persons speaking to each other. One said, Carrie, oh, look, do it. Congratulations. Enjoy your wedding. you got great friends. The food is a uh, good open bar. Just enjoy it. Take it easy. No worries. Have fun. Explore the world. Enjoy yourself. Life is short, and so on and so forth. The other said, today is one of the most important day of your life. You are starting a family. 
the wedding celebration is short, but marriage is for the rest of your life. Respect each other, love each other, be responsible and considerable. Marriage is not a walk on the beach. Well, but it turns out both points of view are true. And most importantly, Arena approved. <laughs> so uh, live a long, healthy, and happy life together. And don't forget, don't forget, we need a few more good hockey players. And as we say in Russian, Gorka, Gorka, Gorka. First of all, what I want to tell you, I have to stay far away from my kids because they say my English is terrible and I cannot talk in English <laughs> and they would stop me. But I, of course, I would talk better Russian, but I would like all of you understand what I am saying. I want to congratulate this couple and to say, to remind anything in my family. In our tradition, the newborn baby would have the same name like the person who passed away alive uh, a while ago and who was very lovely and very good. And three months before Oleg was born, I'm sorry, I'll call him Oleg like in Russian, you understand. In two, three months, my mom passed away. Her name was Olga. And Olga, and, he, and, and my son, he loved her very much. And he said, Mom, if it will be a, a girl, she will be Olga. If it will be a boy, he will be Oleg. That's why he is Oleg. And our people say that the person who passed away in the sky, she takes care of the baby who is born. She will help him to grow up. She will help him when he is an adult. And I think she helped Oleg. And that's why Carrie is his wife. She understands up in the sky that Carrie is the best couple, is the best person, the best part of Oleg. And I hope they will be very happy. My mom will take care of them. And they will be happy, lovely. They will have a good family and they will be the best. Unfortunately, I don't talk Hebrew. I know just one word in Hebrew, what it means, love, happiness, good, good couple, good life, every good kids. This word is Mazel Tov. That's why for all of you, for all the people here, I wish you Mazel Tov. And now, once again, please help me welcome your maid and matron of honor, Caitlin and Catherine. Is this on? Hi, I turn. You're right here. I know, we're right here. Should we look at you? Um, sure, if you want to make me more nervous than I already am. Hi, good evening. My name is Catherine. Hey, no respect. Oh my gosh, it's so weird. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little nervous. I'm not very good at public speaking. However, again, I'm Catherine. I'm the matron of honor. And Carrie and I have been best friends since I believe it was second grade. However, I'm quite certain it was my homegrown bowl cut, bowl cut haircut that drew her right in. 
So I just want to say, first of all, that I'm so excited and honored to be a part of your guys' special day and to be here to support you in this next chapter in your lives. Carrie is the best friend I could ever ask for. She is also quite the woman one of a kind. So she treats her tiny little dog, we all know Bailey, like a human, and she lives for her daily walks to the park with him. She also drives like a bat out of hell, whether she is in a rush or not, and she does her best to be a healthy at-home chef for her and Oleg's weekly meal prep. <laughs> I try. But to this day, even like throughout growing up, Carrie has always been the kind of person that has treated her friends like family, and she would drop anything in a dime to be there no matter what. And I think it's rare to find a person that does that without judgments or any questions asked. She's grown into such a stunning, intelligent, and successful woman, Oleg. You are a lucky, lucky man. And I'm confident that Carrie will bestow the same love and commitment that I felt throughout these years to you. And that's priceless. <laughs> You're welcome. So I just want to end this little speech of mine with a toast, and I'm going to have to read off my paper because I'm sorry I didn't memorize it. But if everyone would please raise their glasses. To Carrie and Oleg, may you live every day as if it is your last. May you cherish each other as if no one else exists. May you support each other and remain best friends always. May you be blessed in health, happiness, and forever love. I love you guys. Cheers. Hi everyone, I'm Caitlin, I'm Carrie's maid of honor. Thank you all for joining us. I want to first thank Carrie and Oleg and their parents, the Offits and the Shores for throwing this beautiful affair. Thank you so much for having us, it's lovely. Carrie was my first friend when I moved to Baltimore in 2010. I was 21 years old and I really needed someone to show me the ropes and there you were. I met her a few minutes after she was assigned as my mentor at ADP and I knew she was a force right away. She blew into the building like a tornado with sales contracts and business cards and to-do lists swirling all around her. And I was in awe of this gorgeous girl with most incredible confidence, who was leading the region in popularity and in sales. And it was no mystery as to why. Carrie, you are magnetic. You're smart and you're my, my most intuitive friend. When I was 21, I wanted to be just like you, and I still do. When Carrie met Oleg, her intuition was spot on, as always. She knew that he would be significant to her, but I was skeptical. <laughs> Oleg is very similar to Carrie, in his charisma and charm. And he was just as good at sales and quickly set records for President's Club and Board of Directors, although Carrie taught him everything he knows. <laughs> but he was just as passionate and hardworking and competitive as my sister Carrie. I just didn't want to see her get hurt. Since they met, I've gotten to know Oleg well, 
and I've seen gradual but distinct changes in Carrie that have helped me understand their relationship and see Oleg as a forever partner for one of my most special people. Since she's met Oleg, she has become more kind and patient and easygoing. <laughs> and she's transformed from a tornado to a homemaker. <laughs> so I must give credit where credit's due. Oleg, you have been an absolute headache for both of us at times. But you've filled up the spaces in Carrie's life with love and purpose. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. Carrie and Oleg are both, are both accustomed to strong family traditions. I know they plan to incorporate into their new family together as husband and wife. One long-standing wedding tradition is to give the bride something old, something new, something borrowed, and something blue for good luck. Since y'all don't need any more stuff, <laughs> I figured I would give these things as a toast. So Carrie, something old represents continuity, and nothing has been more continuous than our friendship since the moment we met. I can't wait to grow older and finer with you. Something new is, of course, this marriage. Remember to keep things fresh and always put each other first. Something borrowed. Carrie, I have borrowed so much confidence from you over the years. And something you can always borrow from me moving forward is the confidence I have in you and Oleg in your marriage. Call me anytime you need me to remind you. Finally, something blue. This reminds me of all of our beach trips. From Puerto Rico to Mexico, from Dewey to Folly Beach, you've always loved a trip to the ocean. But this trip to the shore is forever. He liked it. I made a funny. May your love and admiration for each other continue to grow in depth and purity. Now, I learned something today from Oleg's family. Um, so I'd like to direct everyone's attention to the tiny bottle of vodka on your table. In keeping with tradition, please raise your tiny vodka bottle and unscrew it. Mazel tov to the new bride and groom. Oh, like I am incredibly excited to be here. I wrote a speech, I'll, I'll say it in a little bit, but I just want you to know I'm, I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you, Carrie. You guys are family uh, forever, and I just, I can't, I'm to the moon. I, it's, it's amazing. Good evening, friends and family. For those of you who don't, that do not know me, my name is Andrew Kay and I'm one half of today's best man. Oleg's cousin, Ilya, is the other best man. He'll be doing his last appropriate speech in just a little bit. PG-13 here. It's such an honor to stand up here for you and Carrie. Now, you might not know that Oleg's first name is Olieshka. Is that, did I say that right? Yeah? yeah? Okay, good. Uh, just as you might not have known, that Oleg used to work for Kerry at ADP. He still works at ADP. She was his boss. Technically not anymore, but she still is boss. So I left writing this speech to the last minute. So I'm going to keep it short. 
even shorter than the time it took for the groom and I to play nine holes this morning. <laughs> we didn't play nine holes this morning. <laughs> I made up for it though. I made sure that he didn't drink that much. I made up the difference. <laughs> I actually haven't seen Oleg this excited since the Capitals won the Stanley Cup. I know Oleg was so proud of his team after they finally got the ring, but that pales in comparison to the ring he got today. What a huge turnout. My God. It's so good to see so many friends and family gather here today on this very special occasion. The only thing larger than today's guest list was the groomsman uh, golf score. It, uh, <laughs> that was before the seven or eight mulligans he took. Seriously, I would like to thank each and every one of you who traveled long distances to be here today. There are guests from all over, California, Hawaii, and even Israel. Where, where's Israel? Can somebody stand up from Israel? Who's from Israel? Nobody? Okay. It's amazing how far some of you would travel for a free meal in an open bar. Oleg will probably be having his favorite whiskey drink tonight, and it's safe to say the bride will be having a white Russian later. <laughs> but how about this setting? <laughs> how about this setting? Can we talk about this? How about this setting? What a venue. The only thing more beautiful is the bride. The owner of the hotel, Kevin Plank, who founded Under Armour, made his millions through selling athletic apparel, dedication, and hard work. Oleg made his money to pay for this expensive wedding through selling payroll services, aggressive sales tactics, and strong-arming clients. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oleg is having a great career, and he's actually one of the top sales reps at his company. So clearly, he's gotten good at convincing people to buy stuff. How he convinced Carrie to marry him, I have no idea. I actually don't know too much about the proposal, because that would involve me spending weeks digging through all of Carrie's posts on Facebooks. <laughs> don't they look amazing today? Can we, get a, can we get some class? Don't they look amazing today? I'm not talking about Carrie and Oleg, though. I'm actually talking about Alex and Irina. Let's give a shout out to the groom's parents. They sure have raised one amazing child. Jane. Keep making them proud. In truth, they only raised, an, not only have they raised an amazing daughter, they raised a pretty amazing son who I'm lucky to call my best friend. Alex and Irina, you are the epitome of what a long-lasting and true love is, a type of love that I have no doubt all I can carry will definitely replicate. And speaking of long-lasting and true love, there comes a time in many people's lives they meet that special someone, that one person that they know will be in their life forever. That moment came for Oleg 19 years ago when he met me. We met as freshmen at Pikesville High, where we partied, and then in college we partied some more. And then as we became men, we partied some more. <laughs> but since we're more mature now, we saved the beers for the golf course. I remember at one time I went off to the University of Arizona, and Ole came to visit, and we hopped over to the, across the border to Mexico. <laughs> Had this happened recently, though, Oleg, being the big Trump supporter that he is, would have asked Mexico to pay for this wedding. <laughs> Carrie, you look amazing today. Doesn't she look amazing? I couldn't have asked for a better life partner for my best friend. You're beautiful inside and out. 
kind, compassionate, smart, caring, and an amazing mother to Bailey and Khaleesi. Most importantly, you don't complain when Oleg puts football on the TV. <laughs> While many people say you can't work with a spouse, I know you guys will be the exception to the rule. That's because you two are perfect for each other. You make each other better people, your soulmates, you're meant to be. And today, for the first time, you're Mr. and Mrs. Shore. Yes. I wish you two all the best in your life together, and I can't wait to see what the future holds. Now let's all raise a glass to the newlyweds for the following toast. We hope you share a long and prosperous life, one that is filled with love, good health, laughter, and memorable commutes to work, and an amazing honeymoon that I have no doubt that Carrie will definitely document on Instagram for everyone to see. <laughs> Cheers. And now, please help me welcome our other best man in our last speech, Ilya. Ladies and gentlemen, are you as surprised as I am to be here right now for Oleg's wedding? What I'm not shocked about is that Carrie is sitting right here. <laughs> She's the only girl that will absolutely make him a better person. She has helped him develop into an amazing man, and she motivates him to excel in everything that he does. But this speech is not about Carrie. Ребята, тихо. Instead, it's supposed to show how special Oleg is. Come on now, you know Oleg is very special. He likes everything in twos. Two bachelor parties, two best men, two shots on the golf course when no one's looking. <laughs> Ever since we were little, our parents tried to keep us away from each other because we misbehaved when together. Some things never change. Oleg actually reminded me yesterday of our first encounter. We were about five years old and at some party in a Russian restaurant, probably way later than we should have been there. And uh, I bit him in the stomach. <laughs> Who knows, maybe I was hungry, maybe my parents weren't feeding me. <laughs> he claims that I bit him, but uh, I don't remember this, but I have a selective memory. <laughs> what our parents never knew was how much we would end up motivating each other. Oleg and I have always been competing with each other in everything we do. Some healthy competitions, some not so much. The best competition was life. We literally, year over year, motivated each other in completely different fields, but both relating to sales, until we made it to the top. Now it's time for my favorite part of this speech, the storytelling. The storytelling, storytelling, storytelling. Carrie's a little nervous because she didn't proofread the speech. <laughs> we'll start off in our young age. Remember the one bar mitzvah party when I shoved balloons up my shirt and you were grabbing them with your hands or maybe it was your mouth? <laughs> it, wasn't your, it was your bar mitzvah, wasn't it? I couldn't remember. You were, the picture uh, was on our microwave for decades. I just couldn't find it. <laughs> I wanted to blow it up. <laughs> Do you remember that? You have that picture? <laughs> How about the first time we got truly drunk? And that was at my bar mitzvah when I, I'm pretty sure I had to get carried out. <laughs> 
If, for the non-Jews here, bar mitzvahs are when you're 13 and 12. 13 for guys, 12 for girls. I don't know if that's something we should be proud about. <laughs> How about the time we had those two banger parties in high school? Talk about competing. I'm pretty sure there were a couple weekends apart and we invited just the three neighboring high schools. That's it. To our parents' house. How about when Seth had to uh, meet someone in the graveyard to pick up the three kegs? The Midnight trips to Potomac never got old, too. Stanti was part of those. What about that nap we took on 95? Woke up to a very inconvenient police officer that tapped the window with his flashlight. We always had luck on our side because right when he was w talking to us, remember he got an armed robbery call and jolted off. <laughs> How about all the windless trips to Atlantic City? There he is. He kn that guy right there knows about a couple of them. Ryan Blank. We kept going over and over, and it didn't matter, win or lose, we did it together, we had fun. But how about, remember that one time we had to pick up quarters off the floor because we forgot to, we needed money to pay the toll on the way back. <laughs> right there's the guy that was picking up the quarters, not me and Oleg, of course. <laughs> He's the... Then there was college. We can use the hell out of everyone so much, I don't, I don't know if people, so I don't think people knew if I went to Maryland or you went to Towson or vice versa. All I know is we had a lot of good times. The Princeton House has endless memories. Living in Towson was great, especially during Snowmageddon. Living in Upper Fells was fun, but it taught us that we cannot live together anymore or we will kill each other. <laughs> At a certain point in one's life, a transition occurs, and that transition is love. Oleg fell in love with Carrie, and I had to learn to share. <laughs> Sharing, however, was never one of my strong points. All right. <laughs> I know who said that. At a certain, oops, I eventually learned to share, and then Carrie and I became the left shoe and right shoe that Oleg needed every day to run and eventually fly. I'm incredibly proud of you for everything you have accomplished, and keep shooting for the stars, my man. I love you. And the world is cold. Fill a glow just thinking of you and the way you look tonight. Yes, you're lovely with your smile so warm and your cheeks so soft. There is nothing for me but to love you And the way you love tonight With each word your tenderness grows Tearing my fears apart And that laugh, that wrinkles you know It touches my foolish heart Lovely, never ever change Keep that breathless charm 
Won't you please arrange it? Cause I love you and the way you look tonight. Just the way you look Congratulations. And now we'd like to invite Oleg and his mother up to the dance floor for their mother's son song. Listen when 